Good evening, everyone out there in Wi-Fi land. My name is Telmo. Welcome to Telmo Tuesdays. We're officially live with number 26. I can't believe it's gotten this far. This is the last Telmo Tuesdays 2020. Uh, and we've got a banger to start off. We got Honda versus Coops. They are already in the building, so to speak. They turn on the music on my end a little bit. How's everyone doing? I hope you're all having a great time. I have access to predictions now. How do I how do I do that? I haven't really used predictions before. I guess I just go on my dashboard and see like who I think is gonna win or put up a predi prediction for you guys. Start a prediction, okay. All right, we're gonna do our first prediction. All right, who will win this match? Oh my God, this is this is new. This is like, this is gonna evolve the side betting meta. Oh, I only have, I only have two options. Okay. I guess that's fine. Once you start a prediction, you cannot change it except to delete or close submissions. All right. There, I, pre I started a prediction. You guys can pre predict who is going to be winning the first match on your screen. Honda and B, uh, not B, sorry, Honda and Coops. Uh, they should be ready to go whenever, whenever, uh, whenever they're ready. I heard my door open. It definitely means that my food's here. And my girlfriend is as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, this is our first match of pool, pool, pool 4, I believe, is where these players are. Oh no. He didn't say your name. I'm sorry. Turn mic up a little bit higher. Okay, I got you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are they are they different hot chocolate? Uh, where are we? We should be good to go. Ooh, okay. First match of the night is a Fire Emblem matchup. We got Lucina versus Roy. Hot Sortie on Sortie Prime coming your way. Who do you have your bets on? Put your bets up, chat. I believe you guys are using channel points for this, right? I've seen a lot of Honda before, but I have cast him before. Shout out to the butt monster. Guy. Yeah, this this is a skill-based matchup, I think. Uh, this in this meta, I think Roy does have sort of a favor here. Like sort of favorite here. He does have to get that sweet spot on the hilt of the blade. All right, guys, let's go. Honda's in the chat. Honda is a uh, workout player. I believe Coops is from SoCal. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, he is also a California-based player. We got California is coming through right now. My stable detect is working. There we go. Alright, 
fact that I misspelled Kiki's name. Thank you very much. Ooh, tried to go for that shield breaker to edge guard. Or rather, ledge trap. I always get too confused. Anyway, that didn't work. Roll behind. Double edge dance. Oh, but a lucky down tilt. Gets the two frame, and that's the first stock for uh, Honda. Right. Yeah, first stock really even. Both players playing to their character strengths quite well. Trading back and forth. Uh, and you can tell based on how long... Uh, it took that stock to finish. Finish. Okay. Oh, trying to uh, trying to let trap with the eruption. Can't quite get that great shield presence there from Coops. But so far, it looks like Coops is uh, winning the neutral in the second stock more consistently. Nice forward tilt. Good option select there. Oh no, stretch! Did you forget? Oh. Damn, I should have reminded you. I'm sorry, bro. Okay, short hop double ledge dance. Knows that he shouldn't commit to the full thing. Uh, yeah, the, uh, so far, so far it looks like neither player really taking the hard commitments. And you're seeing it here because these percentages are getting kind of up there. Okay, but we are almost a kill percent for both players. You would have played too? Okay, that's... Oh man, well, you're gonna have to come back in 2021, Stretch, because this is the last one for the year, buddy. I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Ooh, that was a risky shield there, but ends up keeping his stock. That definitely would have killed. Okay, double edge dance. Dare in place. You are a madman. Okay, good. Great patience there from Honda, and this could prove to be the. Uh, the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. Great counter. He's tried to fish for it a couple times. It's finally landed. He's going to be rewarded, but double-edged dance. Doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the stage. At that percentage, sweet spot is going to kill. Okay. A little too anti right there from Koops, but he's rewarded with a double-edged dance. How does he play this? Okay, grab. Up air chains. All right. Looking real even. Tries to go for the hard forward smash read. That doesn't go. Rewarded again, keeping Honda in disadvantage. He is playing the better neutral at this very moment, but it doesn't look like it's very far between these two players. Okay, nice uh, double jump up there. Can you chase him in the air? It's one of Roy's weaknesses. He can't really chase in the air too well unless he gets an opening. Okay, edge guard situation. Tries to go for the counter. That doesn't work. Doesn't matter. Koops is going to fall to the way side, and Honda's going to take one. Yeah, overall there, uh, really, I really couldn't tell who was gonna win that match until the until the very end. Uh, it's kind of on a razor's edge, so to speak, which is ironic considering they're two sword characters. But Honda there able to capitalize more on their neutral wins than Koops was. Koops seemed, I mean, obviously playing the Roy seemed a little bit more explosive, tended to uh, deal their damage and in bursts but Lucina overall more solid fundamentals uh, especially in advantage felt like Koops was not playing his advantage as well as he could have especially given the character that he's playing but that's how the matchup goes so to speak but game two is probably going to be more exciting we'll see uh, the counter pick is on Koops right now so Honda with the two bands all right, it looks like it's going to be PS2. The Honda has to go do something real quick, so we're going to give him some time. But how are those predictions holding up? I hope you guys, I hope you guys are enjoying the predictions. I have no idea how to use them, uh, so I hope you're enjoying. I might have to change the um, the timer. Looks like most people are. Saying Honda's gonna win. 20 channel points, all right, versus Penn so far. Interesting. I like the I like the fact that you could basically side bet with this. This is this is revolutionary in my opinion. Ready? All right, game two, Honda versus Koops. Honda with 
very... Oh, we're going to get a switch from Koops. He's actually switching to the cloud. Three, Interesting. Two, I did not... One, oh, well, I mean, I think I've seen him play uh, cloud before, but this is a much different matchup than the Roy. Koop, uh, Koops playing the cloud now. The cloud, in my opinion, doesn't have as much kill power as Roy does, but he makes up for it with a much better sword. Dodge. That could have been really risky. Luckily, he spot dodged just in time to avoid the grab. Approaching with that back air. Very safe. Ooh, using an up B against the up B. Very smart play from Ponda in the first stock. All right, limits online. Which is he going to go for? He's going to try to get a juggle. Try to get a roll read. Maybe a jump air dodge read. He's been doing it a lot. All right, good conditioning. Good conditioning. Trying to get... Uh, I'm trying to get Honda to be more comfortable with his shielding so that he can run up with a grab later. You see that right there? That's an example of conditioning. That's the ledge. Ooh, he tried to do that in the first game. It didn't really work out for you, but definitely not the riskiest move. It's pretty safe. Oh no, Koops drifting just a little bit too much and falling victim to a classic cloud trap. Yeah, you don't have that dolphin slash recovery, bro. You can't you can't do that that hard of a recovery. Good damage up air juggles, forward tilt juggles. Turn around up B is gonna give Koops his second limit of the match. How is he gonna utilize it? Try to go for an offstage blade beam. Great counter, but it doesn't matter. Alright, so so far he's used Blade Beam twice with his limit. Might want to switch it up the third limit. Try to go for a cross slash. He did get a kill with it though. Uh, and in this matchup, I think that Blade Beam might actually be the safest limit option for the cloud. Nice up smash there from Honda. Okay, limit on deck yet again. He gets some damage with this. So this is a, this is yeah, good mix up there. This is a situation where you don't need to kill with this limit, but you do want to hit with it for sure. Nice forward air. Alright, Honda trying to get a down tilt to edge guard. Can't get that, but the neutral air will go. Nice play right here. And this is more of Honda being able to capitalize on his on his neutral wins. Way better than Koops has this game so far. And it's looking like the cloud pick might have been a mistake. Koops might be kicking himself for this if he gets sent down to losers because of it. But there's still time on the clock. There's still stock left to stock. Koops trying to go for a forward smash there. Okay. Trying to get a trying to go for a little bit more desperation play. Not what you want to do against Lucina. Lucina will most likely sniff that out and snuff it before anything can happen. Oh, a limit cross slash. Great play there from Koops. Alright, he's mixed it up. He's two and two on cross slash and Beyblade. Bay blade beam, excuse me. I almost said Beyblade, but yo, that would have been a sick kick. That'd be a sick character. Beyblades for Smash, please. Alright. Alright. Yeah, and, and, and the rate this is going, Honda is definitely going to clean this up before long. Uh, they do have quite high percentage on the second second stock, but uh, they've got a pretty substantial lead. Are they going to try to go for a down tilt again? Not quite going to get that. Oh, these aerials from Ledge have been so risky for Koops, and it's getting punished really well from Honda. Forward tilt? No, can't get that. Reverse Dolphin Slash. Yo, this ain't melee, dog. All right, down smash is going to take it. Honda. First win of the night. Who got it? Honda got it. Don't show this again. All right, 30 channel points to whoever bet on Honda. Congratulations. And we're going to be moving on. Let's see. We got to have a match lined up. Are they playing right now? All right. Yo, okay, I love seeing y'all in the chat. Got a yup from Pack and Cheese. John D. Real got some channel points, I believe, with that uh, with that correct prediction. Honda taking over Koops. I didn't know. You can, you're only a limited. All right, we, okay, next next match is actually going to be kind of a banger. We got Magna DX versus What's That? What's That? Uh, we saw on stream last Tomo Tuesdays. Uh, they won their, their match. They got an upset, I believe. And then against Magna DX, who is a really good Bowser player from NorCal. Uh, they're going to get the arena up. I'm going to join on them. But congratulations to Honda for winning first match of the night.
Is a melee dog? He was trying to reverse dolphin slash like uh, Roy in melee. All right. Uh, this, I mean, I'm only spitting facts. I only speak in facts. All right. Uh, okay. Their arena is up. I'm just gonna join them. Also, dude, butter phalanges. How are you doing? It's been a long time since we've spoke. And seven five seven one. What you playing nowadays? You, play, you still play StarCraft at all? I haven't played StarCraft seriously in, in years, I think. I tried laddering a little bit last year, but I'm so out of it. Okay. Let me adjust the scoreboard. I hope I spelled that correctly. So Magna DX is a Bowser player, but he's dabbled with his ESS. See if he uh, pulls it out here against what's that? I want to say what's I, I I honestly forgot which character what's that plays, but we'll we'll find out. Oh man, I've been so thirsty lately. All right. Ooh, okay, right. Fox. All right, this is another Fox player. That's right. This is sick. I love it. All right, we're going to start our prediction. We're going to make the submission period two minutes. All right. Place your bets, everybody. One minute to go. Place your channel points on the line. Who's going to win this match? Is it going to be Magna DX, the Bowser player, or is it going to be What's That, the Fox player? We saw this kind of happen um, last week, I believe. What's That? Oh, no, he played Koopa, who was playing Palu. Oh, before he... Oh, I didn't know that. Dude, we should play We should play Slippy sometime. I, I play Melee now, too, but not as, not as good as I am at Ultimate. Ooh, okay. Yeah, this is a this is a matchup that a lot of NorCal folks are pretty familiar with because we see Luis versus Koopa. Well, we saw it happen a lot uh, when land events were happening, but Luis usually getting the best of the, the Koopster here a uh, handful of times. This this really does come down to whether or not Bowser can get those edge guards. Uh, something that we see a lot of. You played melee a lot. Oh, you're an old school dude. Yeah. Okay. Damn, I didn't know that. That's sick. We should catch up. Ooh, that was so risky from uh, Magna DX. I keep wanting to call him Kenneth, not only because that's his tag right now, but because it's his real name. Ooh, that 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 fastball from Rainer is so good from, uh, from from Bowser. Oh my God. Okay. I honestly thought he was going to die. I honestly thought Fox was going to die. But at that time, Fox does uh, take it. You and your crew won all the tournaments from Santa Cruz to Gilroy. Oh, so you held down the, the 831. That's right. You're from you're from, you're from from Santa Cruz. Damn, I miss Santa Cruz so much. It's been like seven years. I really want to go back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so... Uh, Septile329 is one of the heads of the Smash Club at Santa Cruz. Smash Team. 
Yes, yeah, Santa. Saint Cruz. Oh no! Oh! 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 Uh oh! That was a very costly and unfortunate SD there from Magna. Great parry punish though, making up for it. He's gonna want to get this as soon as possible. All right. Can't get the forward tilt. That's a very classic move we see a lot from King Koopa. Uh, flame breath to start the edge guard and then forward tilt to clean it up. But I'm really liking the spacing here from what's at. Uh, he is moving very well and you can see that he is taking full advantage of the heavyweight that is Bowser, turning him to combo food, getting the dash stack in before the forward tilt can come out. Now he's going to be rewarded with a grab, another neutral win. But this is where, uh, you know. Great jump read. Oh, no. All right. Well, game one goes over to what's that? This is Fox. Returning to base. Dang. That is, that is unfortunate. Not only to get footstooled like that, but to lose your second stock to an SD. That's got to be pretty painful. But... What's that going to go up? 1-0. Must be that snowflake that makes you cool. He is pretty cool. We saw him win yesterday, or not yesterday. We saw him win earlier tonight on stream against uh, Koops. All right. Yeah, yeah. That is true. It is the name of the game. And sometimes it's it's just like, you gotta shake that. You gotta shake those kinds of games off. All right, what's that? Looking like a sick fox, though. This matchup does kind of suck for fox at the higher level, just because um, you play you you're playing a light character against a grappler, and you could combo. You could combo Bowser from 0 to 130%, but uh, he could take that stock with full rage at like with like one or two neutral interaction wins. You have to, you have to, um, you have to get a kill with either back air or a smash attack of some sort. It's really hard to chase Bowser up in the air at those higher percentage when uh, up air becomes not true as a follow up. You have to mix them up really hard. All right, let's see what the counter pick is. It's town and city. Ah, oh, this is a good stage for. It sucks mods can't do. Re I know. I'm sorry. It it kind of does suck that um. Mods can't do predictions. I I I don't know why that is. Is it because you guys can influence them? Should I demod you all for this stream? I'll definitely demod all of you so you can bet. Three, two, one, go. Oh man, all right. Well, game two, Magna DX versus What's That? Uh, coming to you on your screen right now. Counter City is the counter pick. Uh, switching off of the Fox, interesting choice. You'll keep your third. You have 31,000 channel points. Holy shit. I don't even have anything worth using channel points on. No, uh, the, the players aren't in the chat channel. I will make you. Oh, I should just create. I should just create a chat command, a channel command. Let's just dump your, dump your channel points here. <laughs> it just does nothing. And you just pay me a thousand channel points. Uh, the players can't hear each other or see, like, you know, obviously they can't see each other, it's COVID, uh, but they, uh, as far as I know, there's no Discord in in the Tomo Tuesdays Discord for players where they, these guys are. These are all happening, like, uh, oh, I'm down. What a, what a, ch oh, what a check, man. Ban somebody at random? I can code things. So I might be able to use Twitch again for that. Oh, what a what a read there! Limit Blade Beam from 
Uh, what's that? Showing some real uh, versatility. That's the word I'm looking for. Versatility. First, the rushdown character, now playing the swordy. Uh, oh man, but this is not looking good. This is a much better matchup for uh, for Cloud than Fox. Nice cross up. Mega DX getting uh, put in the blender for a second there. Yeah, these approaches are just getting completely stuffed out from Magna DX, and he's just getting destroyed in removal by what's at. The sword proven too powerful, tries to go for an up smash, can't get to the beginning of it, settles instead for the uh, lower hitbox, the later hitbox. Oh man, what's that? He's really familiar with this. He knows that Bowser wants to approach that sliding uh, up tilt. Right. He's just getting hit by everything. Oh, great call out there from Magna. He's going to get on the board now. First stock of the game for him. He's got a lot of work to do if he's going to try to catch up. But stranger things have happened. He's not necessarily in death percent just yet on this stock. But he's going to need to start playing much better neutral. He's not converting nearly as hard as what's that is. Oh, but what's that's a, like a step ahead almost at every, every uh, juncture. Hello there, Dairy Milk Cow. How are you doing? Oh yeah, the defense here not looking very good for Mega DX. Ah, try to go for a hard read. Gotta make something happen. We haven't seen a lot of Bowser Bomb uh, from from Magna. Yeah, he tried to go for that. Okay. Try to go for the Bowser Bomb and immediately got up smashed for it. There was a lot of times where that little bit was set, but too late. Um but that's gonna be a 2-0 for what's that? Magna gonna fall down to loser. Yeah, the punish game from punish game from what's that was just too good that game, I think. Okay. Uh, moving on, we got Captain versus Fraga. I am running this bracket. I run these every Tuesday. And we've got 90 something people. I think we I think we hit over 100 for this. Uh, and the only reason is because I put up, I put up money. This is a tournament. I put money up for this. Top three get paid out. We've seen here before uh, Telma Tuesdays. Captain, I don't know much about. I don't think we've seen him here yet. So much money, less than 128 people came. Exactly. Oh yeah, this all comes out of my pocket. Three, all right. two, 
Praga with a Captain with a Bowser Jr. Yo, let's get some Bowser Jr. hype in the chat. Okay. Already looking impressive with a string to start off there. Oh, taking full advantage of the up B. So that's actually the up B after you up B. Turns into a hammer. And I believe it doesn't, doesn't uh, the clown card doesn't come back until hands. So as long as you're in the air, you can swing that hammer. Nice clown car confirm. Oh my goodness, Captain. Popping off. Best first stock of the night so far. There's Braga trying to find a way to start setting up. Has gotten some hits off, but not really finding much else. So, as I say that, forward air is going to connect. Great fun so far from the captain. Oh, that fastball neutral air. Looking really clean. Oh my goodness. And the perfect timing on the Koopa Link. Yeah, this not a lot of people are used to seeing Bowser Jr., but seeing as how I'm in NorCal, we actually have like two really good Bowser Juniors. We have Andy Sorrow and Ramon M64, and that's just the people that go to events. I there might be some sick Wi-Fi Bowser Jr. in NorCal that I don't know about. Oh my god, I love this ledge trap. The captain on point. I'm really impressed so far. I love that using the dash tag to actually extend past. Uh, Okay, taking the stock. Yeah, so using the dash attack to actually extend your hitbox just to that part of the stage where uh, Fraga is going to have to fall through. Really smart. It's going to force him to either hit, get hit by the dash attack or um, you know, fade through, like fade to the left. Yeah, Bowser Jr. is so high. I actually think, I think, I think Bowser Jr. is pretty pretty good. Not, not necessarily top tier, but man, when you play Bowser Jr. well, it looks so good. Oh, what a read! I said Koopa Link. Those are the Mecha Koopas. Okay. Alright, Fraga getting rarely rewarded for going forward. Okay, they're trying to get... Or, sorry. Captain. Trying to find a... Uh, trying to find a cannonball there. Oh, Uppy, that's gonna do it. Game one goes over to Captain. Holy crap, what a... What a game. Okay. Frogger switches off the Samus. I don't know where Frog is from. Or Captain, actually. I know where Captain's from. Captain beating Sephiroth. 2-0 on the way here. What is top tier now? Um, What do you define as top tier? There's top 5, top 10. A lot of people think that this, in this game, top 15 might be top tier. Uh, a lot of people say like, Joker is, Joker is top 5, ZSS is top 5, Pikachu is top 5. Ready? A lot of people say that um, Palutena is top tier on Wi-Fi. Or rather, just in general, Palutena's a really strong player. Alright, game 2 this time. Back, oh, not back. Excuse me. Pokemon Stadium 2. This is kind of big for Karaga. addition of the platform is going to give me some extra mix-up potential. Okay, already starting to play the mind games here on, uh, on, on Captain's Shield. So, hopefully those mind games will prove something. Or result Okay. Well more of the same from Captain. They're moving so good. Moving is so good without it. Using the clown car very effectively. But they're down in this game. Rocket takes up the right. Oh, but an upbeat. Hitting them with the how you doing? Oh, and Frogo with the back of their own. Okay. Much more even now, but I'd say that Fraga actually came out behind in that because he was a 
percent didn't get anything out of it and now captain is gonna open up fraga once again point blank charge shot good stuff from fraga fraga throws the, the mecha koopa right at bowser's face oh, this is lenny excuse me i should be saying lenny Oh, a second back air. All right. Captain gonna have to be a little more careful on the ledge, especially in a cross-up situation. Can't just clown car towards his face like that. You have to mix it up just a little bit. Dash back and get collect the next Koopa. Now, this might actually be a stock. Oh my goodness, Fraga coming back and we're gonna get a game three. That was a highway robbery and you all just witnessed it those predictions are looking pretty sus right now nobody okay well nobody bet for this that was so good and usually you know usually we don't see that killing but that was a perfect setup for braga and now we got a game three. First game was all captain 100% captain. Braga got the read, got the nice counter pick. He's, he's, uh, he got the game two. Now we got into game three. I wonder what the counter pick's gonna be. I wanna say something like, uh, something like Kalos. Northern Cave is legal. bracket before we get into this game three yeah i think in that in that second game the biggest pattern that got exploited was One, captain go. doing the uh, side b canvas a little too recklessly So normally I would think that Samus would be uh, the one who would get more out of this, but Bowser Jr. can utilize those walls pretty well. Great, great conversion hit again from Captain. Oh, no back air for you this time, says Captain. Oh, okay. Another hammer. Exact, almost exactly how game two was. But, okay. Braga now in a little bit of trouble, I think. He can even make an opening happen. He gets it. The charge shot catches the jump. Great conditioning for Braga. Great lead as well. Jumping, using the second jump to actually char shoot the charge shot. The uh, accuracy is caught onto that. You can't use that up B anymore to ledge guard. Ooh, that up smash might actually be super uh, painful for him as a result of punish. Okay, not not as punished as I thought. Jumping right over the charge shot and the clown car goes through the homing missile. Oh, he tries to edge guard with that. He's gonna force an SD out. Oh, wait, no. That's right. This is, uh, this is Kalos. That wall can be wall jumped and tethered. Oh, what a call out. Oh my god. Captain looking really good going into this last stock for Fraga. Fraga going to whiff that charge shot. Not quite finding its mark there. Getting some more uh, charge ready to go. Charge shot is the win condition here in most cases. You definitely want to be able to catch your opponent. You want to be running away. Charging that charge shot. Dealing so much damage with each successive charge shot. And all of a sudden, you take a 40% deficit and turn it into a lead. All, all that captain needs to do is not get hit by that charge shot. Okay, the back air can eat, uh, even it out. But this is going to be pretty difficult for Fraga. Captain now incomplete in charge of the match. But speaking of charge, Sam is going to get a fresh charge shot off of that. Nice back air. Oh, is the cannonball gonna get her? 
before I get that to go. I'm uh, so gonna hit again. Oh my goodness. He's trying he's trying to uh Oh what a tech! Oh, but it's not enough! He didn't up B immediately and he dies. That was unfortunate. But Captain gonna be moving on two to one. That is going to be it for that set. Well, that was that was a good set. Uh, that was probably the best set of the night so far. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Captain later on in bracket. Hopefully, they make it to top 16. So we got Ra versus Smuna. Smuna is a NorCal player. Ra, I believe, is from Mexico. Step into the I think ring. this is the first time we've seen Smuna on Fun of these days. At least on stream. I don't know when was the last time you watched, because there have been quite a few DLC this year. That's on. We got two minutes open. Place your channel point bets. Piranha Plant was if Piranha Plant was the last character you remember, then yes, like six characters have come out since then. on Smuna. Who did that? Oh, okay. Quay with some faith in Smuna. Uh, someone else should probably tell him how to bet because I don't actually know how to do it. Hey, man. 
man. Reading things is indeed hard. Oh, okay. He's on his way. Sounds good. Just taking a little bit of time. Okay, cool. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Alright, they're back. Okay, Raw versus Muna immediately pulling up. Raw immediately pulling uh, Mr. Saturn. Alright. Is that where the RNG is going? Oh man. Alright, this matchup. This matchup can be really hard. Uh, they are. They are not very well equipped to deal with the plenty of projectiles that Robin has. Um, they, they can combo the crap out of Robin, but Robin in general has a really good time against other projectile characters, which is what this magic can boil down to. Cool, nice, nice fastball throw on. Or rather, that, that's just a regular fastball. Nice conversion, smooth taking the first stock. Arcfire, forward smash. Okay, Arcfire ladder. Yeah, no, and in general, you know, Smuda has been showing up a lot lately in NorCal uh, Wi Fi local, so to speak. It seems like this down there, but you know, Wi Fi and vocals, same thing. They've been impressive, and they're starting to they're starting to show it even more here on the Summer Tuesday stage. Back throw. Dark fire can't quite get that. Nice spot dodge from Raw. Smooth is still on their first stock. Find. Oh, okay, interesting. Dash attack and kill. That is a very strong dash attack. Peach very clearly working out. Oh my god, okay. This is what I was talking about. If Peach can get in, Peach can really mess Robin up. Saw that a little bit right there with that string. Dash attack, alright. These are basically even. Nice tomahawk there from Raw. They set up another uh, ledge trap situation. Up smash, not gonna get the sweet spot, so it won't kill, but that's a ton of damage. Oh my god, facing the wrong way. Back air gonna hit. We got sparks. Turn is gonna connect. Second one doesn't connect. Down throw, the turn is gonna connect. Now he's gonna be forced to Elwin. Okay, good patience there from Smuna. Finally gets back to the middle of the stage. Stage control extremely important for Robin, and right now he is starving for it. Gonna get that arc fire up air. 11, uh, 11 up air? I forget which sword that is. Bronze up air. Fuck, I hope there are no Robin people watching. 
Oh, I didn't know you could armor through that. What the heck? She's using the crown there, so I guess that makes sense. Liking the defense here from Raw. Not committing too hard until he gets a confirm. Just like that. Oh, good damage there from Smuna. Attacking on a little bit more with that. Oh, up. Oh, I thought he was going to use a uh, forward smash there or something while you were trapped. While Peach is trapped in the uh, arc fire. Uh oh. Time that air dodge poorly. Shouldn't have air dodged at all, really. Neutral air is crazy, and that is proof. Smuna taking game one over Raw. It's three steps ahead. Okay, so Raw versus Smuna game two. Smuna looking really strong in that game one. Let's see if uh, Raw can come back. Peach, a very good character in this game, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Raw can find, find something in this matchup to exploit. Whether it be the very slow uh, movement speed of Robin or the lag from the projectiles being thrown out. It's hard. Easier said than done uh, getting into this game, too. Uh, so far, Smuna taking a little bit more punishment in neutral. I really like how he's using the arc fires in close range uh, to kind of act as a facing tool. So far, Smuna's defensive options are not looking as good as they did in game one. Oh boy. That turn up is gonna hurt. Oh, Elwyn is really good. Luckily, you still have the book. So you run out. Back air, good positioning. forward throw there. Can't get the edge guard. Stage back to stage. The down smash is going to send Peach up. Very interesting. Oh, a bit of waste there. You don't lose that charge, so there's really no point in not Ooh, These turnips have been on point from Raw in game two. That is another booty bump taking the stock. Nice hot dodge. Oh my god, the timing is impeccable here from Raw. It looks like he's poised to take game two and force yet another game three. Here, second game three in a row. It happens. Nice. Arc fire up smash. Ho ho ho! Oh, but Smuna is not done just yet. Who thinks of that? Seriously, Robin Maids are crazy. Jab book can't kill. I think Fire book. Oh, 
Zoran saved up. Gonna be big punishment, I think. Air dodging right past that. Oh, and Smoona gonna clip him again. Oh, Alright, this is gonna be clutch time for Raw. Oh, a bomb! Oh my god, a bomb! Another one. Oh boy. This is getting tense. Raw's gonna try to find a kill here. Oh, and he ran out of book, and that secured the kill. Open him right up, and an unfortunate mismanagement of resources means Raw takes game two. Can't do anything but clap. What a what a game. Channel points are so mine, says Butter Phalanges. This chocolate, this hot chocolate is so good. Holy cow. Game three. Game three, Raw coming out swinging. Alright, good luck trapping here. Robin always having to be one step ahead. There have there has been a lot of rolling from Red from Raw. It might be the only viable choice really, and aside from the first time we saw the down smash happen, it hasn't really been punished too hard. Nashville. Oh, the Thor! I'm gonna get a kill. Forcing a ledge option with the arc fire and then finishing off with the Thor on. That is called deadly planning. Oh, what hard read there from Raw. Capitalizing on the uh, get up habit with an up smash. Sweet spot on smash food. Okay. Good on him to not actually land on the ledge instead of landing on the stage. And so far, Smuna looks like they have better stage control than they did in game two. Really important here. Yeah, stage control is how Robin wins neutral most of the time. Very rarely will you see a Robin win in neutral because they just have a fast Okay, unsafe option if I'm wrong. And again, that's going to catch and connect. Ooh, he ran out of book that cost him in game one or game two. Will it cost him in game three? Fastball up smash or up, up air? Damage air dodges right out of the fair range. Very good spacing from Smuna. Raw wow, turn up in hand. What are they gonna do with it? Okay, Smuna trying to find an opening. Raw trying to not to give them an opening. Back into the neutral we go. Ooh, another fastball up air. That was in the air, that would have been a kill. Okay. Thor, I'm gonna kill. That's gonna do it. Oh, okay, there's the one stock left. My bad. I thought that was the last stock. It's still a stock up. Good patience from Smuna yet again. Oh my god, that's the second bomb. Oh, oh, he forces an SD. 
One stock left. Last stock of the set. Who's going to take it? Channel points are on the line right now. Oh, tries to catch him out. That would have been a good call out, but the up air was a little bit too early. Uh-oh. This is bad for Raw. Is Muna getting caught on the ledge again? Expecting. Anticipating. Planning. It's all going to be coming down to that. And Smuna takes ahead. game three and the set. Execution precise. And Smuna with an upset win over Raw. We're going to see if uh, you have any more matches we can show. Uh, we can pick that up. I don't think we have many matches left. Whoever Stan Luna is took out Lights 2-0. They're currently 1-0 up on Captain. Marvelous Marco is 1-0 up on Klein. That's the winner's uh, semifinals for group or pool two, sorry. Smuna going up against an Alexander 95 Ganondorf player, okay. Yo, what's up, Al Soda? Glad you could make it. Joining us for the last Tomo Tuesdays of 2020. We're currently looking for a match to put on stream. RMA 2 of Bankai. Mercury. Are we doing something up the stream? Okay, here we go. Yeah, Magic Trumpet Man versus Mercury. Challenge all points low.
Down to the ring. All right, they're here. I'm here. We're ready to go. Yo, little Mac. Three, All right. Two, I'm. I, one, I. I wish I could. Uh, let's make these predictions right now. Uh, so far, both Joker and Little Mac have taken stocks off each other. Uh, Mercury, I don't know. I've never seen this guy before, but Magic Trump Man is a known Wi-Fi warrior. Has, I believe he's been on the WWR uh, at least once. Very good, Little Mac. Uh-oh, edge guarding the other way. I don't even know how that happened. We almost never see high level Little Mac, so I'm like really, really excited to watch this. Oh. The thing about Little Max is that he has kill power, man. That is what he plays around. Four tilt and the smash attacks. So much damage. They're so fast. Obviously, the glaring weakness in his recovery is just, just that a glaring weakness. Okay, get the four tilt now. Ooh, costly. Awesome. Oh my god. This is not looking good for, uh, or rather, for Little Mac. Oh my goodness. Patience side of this thing. Dark arm. Like that forward, uh, forward tilt. Oh, Steven, if I could bet, I would totally bet. Really because of game. All right, but that's gonna do it. Mercury takes game one. <laughs> Who's next? Not a surprise. That matchup is because. probably one of the most polarizing in the game. Joker does. Uh, Little Mac does not have a good matchup here. There are very few characters that Little Mac has a good matchup against. Joker is not one of them.
right, game two, Magic Trumpet Man versus Mercury. Let's see if this counterfeit will do anything for the Magic. The sign of a good little max is when they're able to actually use the jab properly. Not only that, but they know how to exactly honor the most moves of the play. Oh, he's, he's dead. He's dead. That's little max. The problem is that you have to be so late. Little Mac is indeed garbage, and I don't think anyone in here is more qualified to say that than me. Okay, nice forward, uh, up tilted forward smash. Good. Oh, he's dead. Goodbye. Goodbye, little Mac. Hardy. No one is more qualified to say that little Mac is garbage than me. Because I played the character for five years. There's a lot of garbage. Oh, KO Punch? KO Punch is online. Okay, this is suddenly got super hype. Yo, he got it! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I played Little Mac Five. Because he has an instant win button. And my new bass is just like, whoa, he has a kill move? Let's go. Okay, game three. Imagine Trump Man on the verge of potentially upsetting Mercury. I say it's an upset just because he plays Little Mac. Every win that Little Mac gets. Skilled Little Mac can beat any Joker. <laughs> Oh my god, he's so confident he's pulling out four airs. I like the I like the neutral beam mix up, because you can turn it around in this game once you're on the ground. So you can actually land with it. It's actually kinda sick. Unfortunately, Little Max sucks. Like in general. Oh, that dash attack is gonna take it. Make it a punch for him, he's gonna have to run the kill move now. Back air, I can land. This has to be super frustrating. Oh, great counter though. Slip counter. Arsene is online. Oh my god! Oh, he's... I think he's... Oh my god, he's fine! He's not dead! Oh, he's gonna kill. oh my goodness! Magic trumpet! King K rule. Uh, King K rule is pretty garbage, but a lot of players play him as a side character. Kind of like him. He is dangerous online. A lot of his moves vary. 
That's a really strong online. Forward tilt, not gonna connect. This is where Little Mac is unfortunately guarded. Oh, he's trying to edge guard Joker. That's a very brave proposition, especially when you've got one stock left. All the Joker needs is one good edge guard, and this is the set. Will the Magic Trumpet Man give it to him? That is the question. Magic Trumpet Man now, one stock apiece halfway through his KO meter. Our send meter about halfway through as well. That down smash could prove fatal. He uses jump. Does he have enough for it? No, he doesn't. That's going to do it. Mercury going to take the set two to one. Oh, uh oh. Well, I can't say that I didn't expect that. Because I totally did. That's what happens when you play Little Mac. Just get dumpstered. You play online at all? All right, so uh, we are on to winner's quarters. We're already in top 16. You have the game and don't play your own? Congrats to Steven for getting even more channel points. All right, so next up we're going to get Stan Luna versus Marvelous Marco. I almost refuse to say that again.
Oke. Okay. Marco now. Okay, looks like we have to exit the arena because it's only two people. I should have noticed that. All right, marvelous Marco. Let's see. Quite a while. Step into the ring. Sick. All right, we got a match. Uh, so I know Stan Luna plays Bayo. Don't know who Marvelous Marco is going to play this game. Toon Link? Oh, they're playing Zelda. Okay. Toon Link versus Zelda. First game, Stan Winner versus Marvelous Marco. This is honestly very hard for Zelda on wife. Another Toon Link from SoCal. 
Lots of tuning. Oh, oh, what a conversion there, Stan Luna. It makes me cringe every time I say that. So I'm just going to refer to that, that person as Zelda. Oh, wait. Oh, that's costly. You are, you are maybe going to die? You might die. Okay. Oh, second stock evaporating. This is not as hard for Zelda as I thought. Preview of uh, Winner's Final, honestly. That's, they look really good. Yeah. Zelda player looks really good. I don't know which Zelda player this is, because I've never heard of them before, but damn. Alright, Marvelous Marco on the board. Yes. Apparently not. I think they're just foregoing all that for the story. Taking a look at the Zelda player's smash data.gg and it seems like they average uh they average grand finals in the uh tournament they usually go to. Very interesting here. Usually losing to players like Light, Pokelam, Delta Force. Definitely earned a higher seed than we gave them. Alright, game two, Stan Luna looking very Three, dominant in that two, game. One, go. Forgot that button last time. I'm not sure. He really uses B button other than to recover. Just two aggressive zoners going at it. Nothing to see here. This is typical Smash Ultimate play. Nice burn. We're used to. We're actually kind of used to seeing Toon Link here.
Marcos here. Marcos is opting to use a lot more projectile play. Caught the uh, caught the bomb off the reflector. That's actually pretty sick. Wow, that actually killed. I think that might have been a giant. So. I'm not sure because I would have expected that. Oh, okay, it's just got exciting. Swimming player could take out a game from uh, the Zelda player here. Back throw. Oh, nice. actually, that was a nice. He actually mixed me up. I expected to grab there. Uh -oh. oh no! Trying to go for a stomp. That's not gonna work though. Oh, but Toon Link gets it off the re-grab. Marco taking game two with a nice little spike as garnish to that delicious game two dish. Got him. All right, game three. Alright, game three, this is what it all comes down to. Top 16 is best of three until top three. So this is for all the marbles, at least for this game. Just position my mic a little better. Okay. Yeah, Marvelous Marco looking much better than a game one. Once they started using the B button, it seemed to be pretty effective. Can't really complain too much about that when you're not using half your kit. Can't really expect to be winning too hard. Can't disrespect your opponent like that. Oh, great reads here from Marvelous Marco coming through. Getting some good damage. Nice stall with the Phantom Knight. Bomb forward air. Very good confirm. See that a lot from two link players. Oh, great catch. And he catches the bomb as well. Some style points coming through for the Toon Link main. Nice little wall jump wave, uh, wave bounce. Wall jump, B-reverse, uh, neutral B. Very slick looking movement here for Marvelous Marco. Air dodges down, away from the explosion. Great play here so far from Marvelous Marco. The ledge guard situation. Who's gonna get it? Fourth throw, up throw. Not gonna kill. This is Kalos. Remember that. A little bit of a bigger stage here. Can't get as much off that up throw as you normally get on other smaller stages, especially this is uh, stage one. Big vertical blast. Oh, that was a great upbeat from the Zelda player. Alright, 
Marvelous Marco now completely adjusting from game one using almost exclusively the B button. of the arrow hold to actually mess up the uh, timing on what this neutral be. And R use low? That's what it is. I forgot it. Forward. Forward air. Falling forward air. And suddenly, Marvelous Marco one stock away from a spot in top eight. I love his approaches in this game. Kick not going to work. Not going to kill at least. Oh, great patience. And can Marvelous Marco keep it going? He is going to keep it going at least for a couple more hits. Good elevator play, but it's not going to kill. Marvelous Marco now at triple digit percent. Holds that. Oh, great patience. It's going to pay off for him pretty soon, I feel. The up throw, double jump, forward air. Oh, great confirm. Wait. Oh, he's actually alive now. Of that. Oh, but gets caught with the, uh, the side B. Ooh, this could be risky. Oh, fortunately, Zelda doesn't get the up B follow up or the uh, up air follow up. Right, two minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock. Oh, tries to chase him out there. Not gonna connect. Defensive play is so good for Marvelous Marco right now. He knows he doesn't really need to do much other than let the clock run out. And let Zelda try to run into the sword. Oh, the micro spacing there looking very scary. I, I, I think if he dies, if he loses this, it's because he upbeated the ledge. Right, I'm just gonna put that out there. Nice forward tilt, back throw, that should do it. Game three goes to Marvelous Marco. And I realize I, I didn't put the prediction up. Fine. He is going to move on. All right, so next up, we've got Mercury, who we saw upset Magic Trumpet Man versus Gem. Second of four winners quarters. How is everyone's twenty twenty going so far? I know it's almost it's almost over. We've got like nine days left. It's almost over. You can pull through. All right, we're gonna start a prediction for that. Who will win this match, Mercury or Gem?
nine days left. At this point, that could be the end of it all, and we would go, yep. Well, yeah, Step we get it. That's totally fair. That's what I was expecting, to be honest. I was expecting World War III. Okay, Gem versus Mercury on your screens. They're gonna get started. Uh, I didn't see who Gem plays, actually. Gem, uh, I think it's a Rob main? It looks like they're a Rob main. Okay, very interesting. From Canada. We are at, with it, it is kind of a world war with a virus, you're right. Translate the Japanese patch notes to English. Young Link becomes Children's Link. Just a fun fact to throw out there. Oh yeah, man. I actually never stopped. I I, I think I've been commentating since 2011. Three, two, at any, one, any, almost any opportunity. Go! Whether that be at Majors, Locals, StarCraft, League, Smash, like anything. I, I started commentating on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, dude. Which is the game I'm actually good at. All right, but uh, Mercury versus Gem. Gem the Rob main. Joker versus Rob. All right, so anybody who follows me also who also follows Verse Days know that we share an opinion on this matchup, and that is that this matchup actually kind of sucks for Joker. Joker actually doesn't have very good tools to deal with Rob, but Rob can actually deal with Joker pretty well. Um, Joker has faster moves, sure, but I think Gyro is a pretty good anti-Joker tool. Um, Neutral Air is a really good anti-Joker tool. And in general, uh, Joker struggles to get in on the robot. So this just comes down to mostly skill, Oh, you did. You met me. You probably met me at a tournament. In like, well, that would have had to be 2010, 2009, I think. Oh, nice little stutter hover right there. Dash tag and a kill. Mm-hmm. Arsene dash tag, very strong. But uh, let's see if. Gem can actually make something happen here, or if Mercury will run away with it in the second stock. Nice follow-up. Mercury playing Joker to the strength, trying to get an edge guard, can't get that to go. Oh, he tried to go for a jab reset there, I think. Up smash? No up smash. Good mash there for Mercury. Oh, clean conversion there for Mercury. Good, good reversal. Get back into neutral from Gem. Mercury with a drag down, drag down fair one uh, down smash. That's that's clean. I'm liking how Mercury's playing. Ooh, that empty hop. Good idea, but poorly executed in my opinion. Down smash. Gonna send him the other way. Very finicky. You know that you have to be on the other side of that down smash. Oh, the Tarkarn is going to kill Rob. Now it's going to be three stocks to one. Trying to avoid the three stock here is the Rob with a fresh stock. But now Mercury trying to carry Rob all the way to the other side. Finally lands a rotor arm. That is going to be the first kill. Uh, threw the rotor arm out once, I think, exactly in the first stock. All right, but it's going to connect twice in a row now here. That's going to be some good damage, but the Yeehaw taken away. That means your time is limited. You gotta get something going for the second stock if you are the Rob player looking for a clear opening, but can't really commit too hard in neutral. Otherwise, Joker will punish very hard, just like that. That is gonna be a huge punish, and can he capitalize on it, or will Gem make something else happen? Starcarn gonna get uh, nothing out of that. Rotor Arm is going to whiff, and the punish is a forward smash. 
We get the finish screen. That's a false finish. Gem now trying to get forward. Oh, okay. Great. We tech those. Good play from both players. The up tilt empowered by our Sen. And Mercury is going to take the first game. Okay. Moving right along. Very well played from Mercury. Able to really exploit the... Um, Able to really exploit the slowness of Rob there. Uh, really just getting in, in Gem's face. Mercury able to punish very efficiently. That's Joker from Persona 5, and that wasn't a meme. I'm actually telling you that. If you've never played Persona 5, uh, it's understandable if you don't really play JRPGs, but... As someone that's currently going through their third Royale playthrough, I highly like, I highly recommend it. Ready? Okay, game two. I think we're gonna go back to PS2. I wouldn't be shocked to see another stage though. I did not look on Smash GG, so there will be no spoilers for me. And it's Yoshi's story. Okay. Small stage, gonna help, uh, gonna help Rob out with our rotor arm kills. Tells me that he is going to be fishing for that quite a bit in advantage state. So Joker is going to have to be extremely aware of that. Mercury did play extremely well in game one. Was able to really negate a lot of Rob's game plan by just staying patient and uh, capitalizing where he could punish. And that's kind of what it comes down to at a high level. Or rather, at a low level. The approach there. Neutral air. Mercury's so good at baiting out these aerials from Rob. Patience here. Can you get something off of the up throw? Can't get too much. Arsene about to come out. I want to mitigate Arsene as much as he possibly can to Tarkarn. Not going to hit anything. Thank goodness. You can only reflect one attack with that. Ooh, nice up smash in neutral. Rudder arm the other way. Interesting choice here. Gonna force him to up B. Oh my god, he actually fell past the rudder arm. That was a huge call out. Mercury tried to get the call out, but got called out back for holding the forward smash there. Oh, an edge guard? Extended edge guard sequence? Pog? Oh, can't get that. I always love seeing extended edge guard sequences. Those are literally like my favorite part of Smash. Alright, down guns. I believe that's. Oh, no, that's up guns. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't go for the drag down there. Clean movement here for the Rob player. Haven't been able to... Uh, hasn't been able to get anything off of the uh, lasers. But... Hasn't really needed to. It's still two stocks apiece and even. Oh, his feet. Of course, he's got the Dark Guard. You have to play around that. You have to make sure that anytime you commit when Arsene is up that it's something that you can actually land and it won't kill you if it gets countered. Nice pick up there. Keep in there. Ooh, that was slick. That would have caught me, honestly. I would have dropped shield there. And that's why I'm not in winner's quarter. Some down throw. Oh, no, it's just gonna be up there. I think I would have rather just seen the berry. Okay, throw it again. Ooh! Okay. Alright, doesn't matter. Nice conversion there from Jam. Oh, 
Oh, what a call up. Up air, actually, a really nice call up. Yeah. Mercury gonna hit the back air. Use the up B stall to make sure that gem doesn't actually get hit by that. Oh, down smash. That laser, not enough. That was scary. Can't quite get the punish. Very, very slightness. But that empowered dash tag. Looking reminiscent of the first game. Oh, he tried to four. I, I guess that is his fastest option out of shield, isn't it? So it makes sense, but not for the application here. Oh, big combo coming out from Mercury. You'd love to see it. All right, side B not going to connect this time. Just a slow turnaround and a grab. That's going to be the punish from Mercury. Mercury trying to Rebels guard something. Don't know what. Oh my god, that would have been huge, but Gem whiffs the up smash. That's the last thing. The only thing that doesn't connect in that string. The right guard here for Mercury. Gem now back in the middle of the stage, trying to back air. Trying to secure a stock. Trying to force a game three. Is that the berry this time? Down air. Rather down, uh, down throw. Not going to kill. This is starting to get intense. Keep an eye on that Arsene meter. 50% of the way there. Any more damage, and we could be seeing Arsene out for a fourth time this set? Fifth time this set? Who knows? Hasn't really gotten a lot out of Rebel's Guard down throw. Oh my god, trying to just up smash in his face. Oh, and he gets it the second time! Gem is going to take game two. Chills. Absolute chills. Game three, that was a really good choice of stage for uh, Gem in that second game. Ready? Let's see where they go for game three. three Town, two, oh no, this is Smashville. One, go. Town and Smashville. Pretty neutral stage in this matchup, maybe. That platform is gonna be hell for a uh, gem if he gets caught on it. Mercury underneath. Their strings can potentially block it. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Actually, wait. I'm wrong. That is, I don't think that's high enough. Or low enough. But Jam taking the first stock there. Very nicely done. Move on. Oh, Nair to Arm Rotor. No laser. Hasn't landed really a laser, a significant laser in the set yet. But it doesn't matter. He's really just using it as a spacing tool. Send out again. Oh, getting a little bit too greedy, and that's going to get punished by an Arsene back here. You can't be greedy when Arsene is out. Unless you're super far ahead. Down with last stop. Nice recovery there, just way out of threat range. Basically recovering from. No 
Those that he goes one stock down, our scent could become a factor. Trying to get as much damage done as possible. Ooh, catches with the arm rotor as he's falling. Very good play. Gets caught with a down smash at the ledge. Do I like the little boost there? Not a lot of people expect that. Uh, he can pretty darn fast off the ground. Fishing for those side bees now. Can't get that. Oh, Arsene is out, so Spike is on the table. But that's going to get uh, mitigated quickly. Oh, up smash. That's going to do it. GG's. And it looks like the winner is... Moving on. Let's see. Let's settle this prediction. Jem did win that match. On versus Alexander ninety five. How are you doing, man? Been working behind the scenes with TOing and stuff like that. Dealing with a few issues here and there, but glad to see that the bracket tonight is running smoothly for all of you guys uh, watching tonight. It is yeah. the last uh, tournament that we're having for the year, so hopefully we can go out with a bang here. Hell yeah, that's 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 what we want to do, really. We. We've been spending a lot of 2020 doing stuff behind the scenes for you guys. Hopefully, we leave leaving 2021 on the right foot. Yeah, for sure. And honestly, this is going to be... Uh, honestly, so far, this is probably one of the most stacked uh, tournaments. Like, we had 100 entrants uh, in this tournament. One of the bigger ones that we've had in a good while. So, thanks to you guys for participating uh, and signing up for this bracket. And also with the new feature of adding predictions, adds a little bit of side bet into it without actually uh, almost no loss. I would I would say that except uh, Que in the chat lost uh, all of his points there. Unfortunately, his he cabbages. Really bet all of his he bet it all. <laughs> oh he bet it all. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. That's well, hilarious. anyway. Yeah, that I know. It's like the end. That, my friends, is why you don't go to the casino. <laughs> If you play your cards wrong, you lose everything. He still has 39.7k left. Okay, never mind. I, no, that, that's okay. <laughs> I believe I had you had me at the first half, Steven. You're not going to lie. Okay. Next match we're having up. Uh, who are we having up, Telmo? RM8 versus Alexander95. So it's uh, Ike versus Weaver. Ooh, that's okay. So I've seen RM8 as like I see him as probably one of the best Ikes uh, on Wi-Fi, probably even the best Ike I would say. Yeah. So this, especially against a character like We Fit, like has the ability to just wall out uh, hitboxes, uh, especially just hit soccer ball away from it. Uh, so not gonna be too much of a factor. So just gonna be curious about how. RM8 will go about this matchup, but Alexander95, I will say, 
Uh, haven't seen too much of him in terms of the like, WeFit just because I've been on the sidelines. But it's going to be interesting to see this matchups go about it. Just because uh, WeFit has the ability to just crouch under Ike's Nair. So, and also crawl, so Nair is going to be a bit less of a factor. It's more like Arme going to try to fish more, more grounded options, such as down tilt, uh, low angled F tilt, etc. Um, in this matchup, or at least that's what I uh, exp am expecting. Yeah, um, it's really going to come down to whether or not an Alexander 95 can appropriately space his, uh, his, his projectiles. But we're going to get into game one. This is our third of four winners quarters. So we are two matches away from top eight. Can you see everything, by the way? Yeah, I can see everything completely fine. Nice and clear. About to give you guys some, not top commentary, but at least some decent analysis about what's happening in the match. So hopefully you guys enjoy for tonight for the last uh, event of the year here in NorCal. Anyway, we're starting here. Game one on Town and City here. Ike versus We Fit. Who you guys got your bets on? Type your predictions in the chat. Bet your channel points. Earn some more, uh, not prizes, but like... I yeah, guess for more 2021, we'll have to figure out what to do with these channel points now. Eventually, yeah. yeah. I mean, predictions is already a good thing uh, to add. Okay. Uh, right now, uh, all you RMA fans seem to uh, have a good start on your hands. Like, right now, he's us utilizing a lot of these Town City platforms to extend those uh, strings right there and getting that edge guard on the right side. <laughs> Only 57%. Strong start for RMA. I, I, I just want to call out... Someone in chat, uh, Butterphalanges, is like, I can't take WeFit seriously. All right, you have not fought a good WeFit trainer. WeFit trainer is widely regarded as one of the better characters in this game. Such a niche character with amazing stats. Oh, what a spike from Alexander. You definitely need to not sleep on WeFit. <laughs> yeah, and with that, he actually brought that all back to even off of one string. Like he got one Sarga Ball, got the edge guard, forced the air dodge, and is able to catch the spike on his recovery. Ike's most vulnerable when he is off stage and having to catch that recovery, especially when he's forced up B since you could just spike him on his way up, or even uh, with quick draw being a bit harder. But if you snuff that out and force an air dodge, he's forced up B. Very easy edge guard and good on Alexander, able to catch that. Ooh, nice F tail covering that space, pressuring him with those nares, making sure that he's forcing a certain get up option and able to cover off with that F tilt. So he has 104 rate uh, percent uh, on him right now, trying to get, the, uh, get utilize this rage. Use a quick draw, goes high. Right, gets a nair, gets a grab, into the up airs. No. Uh, right now, this is this is an extremely high pace, like fast paced match, especially for this matchup. Oh, nice header! Ooh. That's gonna steal the stock. Yeah, just right, caught him slipping on that recovery. Like, especially with the usage of projectiles, Weefa is just able to cover a lot of Ike's recovery options. Uh, so, RMA is trying to be tricky with it, whether he uh, making it hard for him, whether he lands on a platform on Town City, he goes past it, or even uh, going straight to ledge. Uh, he's always trying to mix up his recovery options, so it's not as predictable. Also, I'm real. Ooh. That Ooh. is take it. That meaty dash attack. <laughs> I think a lot of the uh, advantage state that we fit had could be boiled down to getting deep breathing and using that threat to kind of force RMA into not not favorable positions. Mhm. Mm yeah. The thing is that Ike disadvantage is one of, probably one of the worst uh, conditions in the game. So. And now Xander was able to capitalize on all of that. Every time that RMA was off stage, he was uh, now Xander was able to throw out the header, uh, charge up Sun Salutation, uh, and able 
to just prepare himself for whatever option our mate actually goes for. So yeah. with the header catching those high recoveries, and if he goes to ledge, then he's able to set up the ledge trap situation. Yeah, that is that is one of those things about um, about Ike that you really have to play around. And one of his biggest weaknesses being, you know, he can really exploit his recovery. The problem is that it's not free, obviously. Uh, you, right. Ike, Ike can mix up his recovery pretty well, but if you've got them to the point where they have to ether, the Ike is usually in a really bad spot. Mm hmm. All right. Game two. All right, makers. Now, Alexander 95. This is uh, it's up with them. No, I don't expect a change in character. It was it was a based on like how that first game went. It was a it can be pretty much a coin flip. Like honestly, they were both playing it very well. RMA just had that slight lead. It was able to maintain center stage a good majority of time. Wall out, like I said, using those F tilts, landing a lot of those nares. Uh, surprisingly, against We Fit, uh, since We Fit does have utilize uh, that crouch very well. I spent uh against Ike. So hopefully we see some form of adaptation from Alexander, uh, maybe using that crouch a bit more and possibly like trying to wall uh, our mate out with Voice audio died, and it, I don't know if you guys can hear like uh, some technical errors, having technical difficulties here uh, with the stream. So uh, yeah, don't worry. With Tumbles on it, he's getting that work stuff. Meanwhile, I'll tell you what's happening in this match. We're gonna we're here on PS2, and we see the tables have turned. Uh, now Alexander having a hundred and forty percent lead to zero right now, and and that's a zero to death. He got one deep breathing, got one conversion off, able to get 150% on him and able to get that kill. Our mate already down his first stock in this game one. My god. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you just fine, Tom. <laughs> I will say, I'm not sure what uh, happened there, but we saw some quite exciting gameplay coming from Alexander. He has made that adaptations. Uh, needed to beat RMA, already taking the lead in a whole stock at that. Oh yeah, this is, this is quite a good adaptation from uh, from Alexander. He's, he's had a really good time with his shield habits compared to game one. Uh, he definitely hasn't gotten exploited for his defensive habits nearly as much. Ooh, that's a great Nair, uh, Nair Bear. Yeah, Nair Bear. From Ike. Honestly, that could have been broken by the weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, my oh God. he has a jump. No jump. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, able to make it back. Nair, yeah, at this percent, he waited for the air dodge. Nice, he got the forward air, so he has him in the ledge trap situation. He's gonna go for the eruption there. Doesn't get the two frame. Nice grab, goes for the up throw, and he goes off stage, catches the air dodge. Good stuff from our mate. Uh, Waiting out those options. Okay, forces the air dodge, gets caught by the header though. We got two stocks to one. Again, Alexander maintaining this lead very well. Gets a nair into, up, uh, into the up to 40% on the dot right there. Right, down throw up air, catch it, trying to catch a landing. Nice, using the header to try to stall out the timing on that. Oh, gets hit by the spike hit of the, yeah, the back hit of the forward air. Back air out of shield or out of the platform. Oh, he quick draws right in front of him. That's gonna be a grab punish. Forward throw is gonna hold, give him center stage. Goes high, reads the recovery option. Alexander is playing out of his mind right now. Yep. Is the header gonna kill? It is. Yeah. We're gonna get a game three. 
Wow, what started as like a coin flip, uh, like between Arme and Alexander, now is completely one-sided for Alexander. He started off that game with a zero to death, uh, within the first forty seconds, and kept that lead, maintained it, and able to take the game two here. Oh yeah, I've been making sure on Twitch that you've been running. It's been running. It's still running, even though despite that little mishap that we had earlier. Cool. All right, so this will be the third or fourth quarterfinals tonight. Uh, our next one is going to be Killzim versus OG Mustaine, a Terry player. We've seen him a hand handful of times here on Tomo Tuesdays. <clears throat> but before that, we're going to get into game three. Yeah, so now Alexander, after that game two, must be feeling really good about himself. Our mate might be a bit shook by that, but we're going to see the counterpick to FD. This is going to be a really good stage uh, for Ike just to maintain uh, those juggles without uh, having platforms to deal with. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright, we're having a bit of technical difficulties, but the content is still there for you viewers out there. We are still seeing this awesome gameplay between RMA and Alexander95. Right now, nothing too much is happening. Uh, RMA is definitely trying to play a bit more patiently around around uh, Alexander's options, uh, using that Nair around him a little more uh, cautiously. Yeah, unfortunately, misspaced it there. Alexander, yeah, just catching a lot of his options there. Uh, especially see catches him holding shield using the conditioning of the projectiles forcing him in the shield and catching uh, those recovery options nice that's gonna be an up out of shield gonna uh, give our mate stage control I, I think the one thing that is, a diff is different between games two and three is that in game two our, our mate was really trying to recover in front of Lee Fish Obviously, we're seeing a lot less mm -hmm. of that now, and it's resulting in uh, situations where our mate can actually find himself in advantage state, just like that, in dash back, dash grab. And okay, he's gonna convert off of that. Uh, yeah, it, it comes down to the recovery in this uh, in this particular matchup. If our mate can recover properly, get back into neutral, he's at the advantage. But what's happening is now Alexander is really good at. Spacing. Now, Ike's, Ike's, uh, not just mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, now Alexander, he's trying to play um, our mate like in the corner, in the corner game. So you see him, he's trying to uh, hold uh, the ledge since Weefit has the tools to actually kind of camp the ledge, especially against Ike. But our mate is just scary with his ledge trap. In. Uh, especially since he can get caught up. He gets one Nair and able to convert off of it. Gets a, a nice down tilt, even able to convert off it. Like, you, ledge is not a place you want to be, especially against like despite being a character like we fit. Right. Oh, okay. Air dodge. Man, the air dodge in this game. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it, can be, it can be really scary to air dodge in some ways. Yep. Especially since, like in this game, air dodge is such a huge commitment, like to do to go for. But so if you use it like haphazardly, such as like you panic air dodge when you're trying to recover. Oh no, RM8, what is happening? It looks like he tried to go for an edge guard. His double jump didn't come out, and unfortunately had the SD there. Oh, he's going deep for this. Yeah, and that's the thing that. Our mate kind of like I see him. I know Ike has some capability to edge guard, uh, because of that fair buff. He's able to throw out about two fairs before he actually needs to recover back to safe with his up B. But I don't know if that's something you want to do, especially against Wii Fit. Like edge guarding Wii Fit is like going in there uh, with a hand grenade that, like, that could go off at any point. <laughs> that's actually that's actually very true. Happy now. Speaking of hand grenades, I can drop any moment. This, uh, this eruption, oh my goodness. Uh, 
Uh oh, so has no jump. Yeah, he. You see, like what we were seeing earlier is that our mate is like catching, or he's going for a lot. Uh, with his with his quick draws, like going back to stage instead of going straight back to ledge, and that's what's costing him like a few of these interactions and a bit of extra damage. But this time he does catch the air dodge time. It's one stock apiece. Uh, winner side stock for both of these players. He expends the air dodge. That's sun salutation. Is that it? Yes. That's it. Going to be it for RM8. Yep. Uh, now Alexander at 95 pulling off the upset. Good stuff to him. Uh, we're going to move on to the next match. Uh, and someone hose. Kills him versus OG Mustang. Ooh. Okay, I know OG Mustang as a pretty good uh, Terry player from Mexico, if I recall. And kills him. That's a new person. That's definitely a new one I've heard. Or I've never heard from. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. Uh, due to uh, certain complications. Uh, unfortunately, some players we did have to DQ. Some of them you were probably expecting. Um, but yeah, Killzim had to fight, uh, was going to fight Salem for this top 16 spot. But unfortunately, due to circumstances, Salem did have to DQ. But he has made it. Let's take a little bit, look up about the rest of his bracket. In his round one, he had to fight uh, Jacob12, a uh, Palutena player, uh, who won that set 2-0, uh, got a bye in his round two, had to fight Lycanlog, uh, one of the probably uh pr norcal player uh here be beating like lock 2-0 as well and then getting a buy in his winter semis match uh to get here to top 16 all in which with the character zss so i honestly expect uh zero suit samus terry matchup um gonna be a bit more difficult if for Terry, just because you really have to try to catch Zero Suit, especially like since Zero Suit has so many options and is very evasive uh, with her forward airs, flip kicks, boost kicks. So we'll see how OG Mustang is gonna have to deal with this uh, threat of Zero, uh, Zero Suit. And give you, I'll give you guys a reference. So Killzone was uh, seated 84 here. Since this is probably what I think this is the first time we've seen him here in this bracket of uh, Tomo Tuesday. So we had no idea about him. But the fact that he's able to get by uh, through so many of our other top seeds here and get, make it to winner's quarters, having to fight the ninth seed, OG Mustang, that's quite impressive. So not a person that we can definitely sleep on. So wi this is going to be very interesting to watch. Wi Fi, Wi Fi. There could be some random player out in fucking Idaho. They could be the best Bowser Jr. in the world or something. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, but I gotta get into this arena. Oh boy. Hopefully, we don't get any more technical issues uh, going forward after finding out this issue. I'm going to restart. Okay, so. Yes. Alright. So, don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back as soon as we get all the technical stuff done. <laughs> 